I'm interested in uh, Labor's EV strategy. We've had uh, a lot of talk about EV sales going through the roof. Some people in the car industry tell me that's not actually accurate. Uh, what do you make of what's happening in that space? And uh, is that the future? Uh, are we going to be all driving EVs within 10 to 15 years? Well, I think it's interesting, Rita, that even after the Labor Party's thrown uh, tens of millions, I think hundreds of millions, it is costing hundreds of millions of dollars of tax incentives to uh, get people to buy electric cars. That's not happening. So this week they've had to announce that, well, we're just going to force you to buy them. We're mm. going to put in a new carbon tax, we're going to put in quotas and caps on how many uh, non-electric and, and internal combustion engine cars you can sell. So you have to buy the electric version uh, of these. And, and this just shows that the problem here with the whole idea of electric cars, and I've got nothing against them. If you want to buy an electric car, go for your life. They're fun to drive. They have some limitations, like everything in life. But the problem with them is that consumers just don't seem to want them. I mean, I can't remember uh, back in the days of Henry's Ford, the government having to subsidise petrol stations uh, or provide you know, a tax deduction to buy a Model T. I mean, people just went and bought them. And we didn't even have petrol stations there. We had no network. And within decades, the country was littered with petrol stations because people wanted to drive. Uh, you know, we didn't invent the wheel by put a tax on walking. Uh, <laughs> but now apparently we've got to invent the CV by taxing what we already have. I mean, they're just not that much better. So that's why people are buying them for the extra so James, Sorry, Rita, James. Well, Senator, I just wanted to, to follow up on, on that idea. I mean, you know, one of the things that we keep being told is that there is this huge surge in demand, but for some reason, you know, the electric vehicle makers won't sell them here unless they distort the market. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to, to do so. But what it also seems to be, there seems to be a real common thread between this and the energy market and mining and everything else. It's a totalitarian control mindset. By what rights does this government decide it is going to drive industries out of business, whether they are the petrol car industry, the coal industry, the gas industry? All of it seems incredibly totalitarian to me at its fundamental base. Absolutely, uh, James. This is this is about about control, and that's what they, that's why the government or the Labor government in particular likes these types of schemes. But it is this remarkable argument that somehow the government has to pass laws to allow business to create a market. Uh, I mean, if there is demand for electric cars, I can tell you what car companies would be selling them in Australia because uh, mm -hmm. they want to make money, just like any other business. But they apparently now saying they want the government to force people to buy a certain type of car. What's really happened here, James, is these corporate uh, be behemoths like Ford and others have, have under undue pressure from green activist groups changed their whole business model to produce electric cars and now they're desperately seeking government's help in trying to justify the billions of dollars they look like they've wasted on these investments. Well, it shouldn't be the government's job to bail out uh, companies that make poor business decisions because mm. you look at the US and Ford, they're losing billions on electric their electric car strategy because they're just not following the market. And what we've got to get back to here, surely, is why don't we put consumers first? We're putting climate first all the time in some futile attempt to change the temperature of the globe when China's not doing anything. Why don't we put the Australian consumer first, the Australian people first, provide what they want? And I know talking to people around my neck of the woods, what people want right now is they'd love to be able to get and afford you know, one of those Rams, they'd like to get one of those cars for the same price they get in the US. How come they're like triple the cost of what you buy in the US? Why can't we get them here at a reasonable price? Why can't we have a government that's trying to deliver for what people want, uh, not, not what they think, uh, they think everybody else should have? Now, Matt, I just want to ask you about one of your colleagues, Senator Lydia <laughs> Thorpe. Uh, now, she behaved badly uh, at a strip club and uh, they're now kind of suggesting she should be kicked out of the Senate or something or other like that. Uh, but, but I'm confused because I recall a politician back in around 2005, 2006, sometime like that, who behaved very badly at a strip club in New York uh, and got complaints from the girls about his behaviour at New York, but we made him Prime Minister. So does this mean that perhaps we're going to see Senator Lydia Thorpe promoted to Prime Minister if we're to follow the model of previous uh, examples? Yeah, well, it's a crazy world, James, isn't it? So who would know? 
Look, I mean, I don't think the Parliament can't kick people out. Only the people can kick them out. And the problem is, if we start going down that road and saying Lydia should be kicked out for what she did last weekend, before you know it, it'll be politically weaponised and people will be pick out, pick kicked out for spreading fake news or arguing that masks don't work or something like this, right? So we've just, I just, I don't support any principle that somehow the Parliament should be sovereign about uh, who, over who elects, who sits in your Parliament, it's your Parliament. The people have to decide. But it's just so unfortunate. What we should have, obviously, is a system where it should be a. Uh, uh, a position of great honour to be a senator, and as a senator, you, you should try and uphold the, the the great gift you've been given by the Australian people with an appropriate level of standards and behaviour. That's obviously not happening here, and we're left with this unfortunate and unrectifiable situation where a Melbourne strip club, who has banned Lydia Thorpe from going, a Melbourne <laughs> strip club has a higher standard than the Australian Senate. Rita. Well, some of us aren't surprised by that, to be honest with you. Uh, <laughs> but I do want to ask you about uh, a very fine senator, Senator. Price, who is now our Shadow Indigenous Affairs Minister, uh, how do you see the the voice debate going? We've, we've had some polling from Roy Morgan saying supports down 7% from December. There seems to finally be a counter-argument to the voice offensive. Yeah, look, I, I do sense things are shifting. People are starting to think about it a bit. I, I reckon at the start of this year, hard anyone knew what The Voice was. They thought it was a reality TV show. And, and now <laughs> people are starting to think about it. So I still think probably the polling is not very accurate because people haven't, largely a lot of people haven't thought about it very deeply or don't even know what it is still. So we, we're going to probably see the polls move around quite a lot in the next few months. Uh, it's obviously going to be up to the people in the end. And I, I think what is what is really cutting through and what you see and what Jacinta is saying and and how she's, she's talking about her family and her Australian experience, is, you know, this is... The, the no case here is the case for we are one people. Uh, we want to be one people, and we want to be one Australia, and if you support that, you've really got to vote no, because a vote for yes is a vote to divide Australia, and you can see in Jacinta's own family, it's about dividing families uh, who have an Aboriginal father and, a, and, a, and, a, and, a, and, a, and an Australian or a Celtic mother or something, you know, any, any kind of mix is divides, puts a dividing line through us. Uh, and that's so, so different from the 1967 referendum, where that was actually about finally creating uh, and overcoming uh, the initial sin of our constitution, which didn't create one people, which did have disadvantage for Aboriginal people in it. And it was right that over 90% of Australians supported getting rid of that. But now we want to, I think, to honour that result in the 1967 referendum, we should vote no to keep Australia one and united uh, as one great people in this great country. Here, here, Matt Canavan. Uh, I, I said earlier in the show, and I'll say it again, I believe that the Libs and the Nationals now working together against the voice Peter Dutton, Jacinta Price, Matt Canavan, there's a great team there. David Little Proud, these are the people we need. You guys can win the next election, so keep on going because that's what Australia is going to need very desperately in about 18 months' time. Matt Canavan, thanks so much. Always great to chat to you.